teach us to love you above all things and to love our neighbors as ourselves. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit. One God, one God, now and forever. Now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. The Old Testament Old reading Testament for the fifth Sunday, Sunday after Pentecost, after Pentecost comes from the book of Leviticus, book of Leviticus chapter, 18, chapter 18, beginning at the first verse. The Lord spoke, the Lord to, Moses, spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the, people, to of the people, of people of Israel and say to them, I am the Lord, your, am God. The Lord your God. You shall not do shall as, not they, do as they do in the land of Egypt, land of Egypt where, you where you lived, and you shall not you do shall as not they do in the land of Canaan, to which, I am bringing to which I am bringing you. You shall not you walk shall in not their statutes. statutes. You shall follow my shall rules follow my and rules keep my and statutes and walk in them. Walk in them. I am the, I Lord, am your the God. Lord your God. You shall therefore, you shall keep, therefore my keep my statutes and my rules. And my rules. If a person if does person them, does he shall them, live, by them. live by them. I am the I Lord. Am the Lord. When, you the when you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap your field right up to its edge. Neither shall, Neither shall, shall you, you gather the gleanings after, after your harvest, and you shall not you strip shall not your vineyard strip bare. bare. Neither shall Neither you gather shall the fallen gather grapes the fallen of your vineyard. Your vineyard. You, shall you shall leave them for the poor, for the poor and for the sojourner. For the sojourner. I am the I Lord, am your, the God. Lord your God. You shall not you steal. Shall not steal. You, you shall not deal falsely. You shall not lie to one another. You shall not swear not by my swear name by falsely, my name and so profane and so the name of your God. Of your God. I, am the I Lord. am the Lord. You shall not you oppress shall not your neighbor, oppress your or, neighbor rob him. or rob him. The wages, the of, wages a of a hired servant, servant shall not remain shall not with you remain all, with night all night until the morning. Until the morning. You shall not you curse, shall not the, curse deaf the deaf or put a stumbling block before the blind, but you shall fear your God. I am the Lord. You shall do no injustice in court. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer, or defer to the great. But in righteousness shall you judge the needy. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people, and you shall not stand up against the life of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate your brother in your heart, but you shall reason frankly with your neighbor, lest you incur sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. Their voice has gone out to all the earth. And their words to the end of the world. The epistle for the day comes from the book of Colossians. Chapter 1, beginning at the first verse. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. Of this you have heard before in the word of the truth, the gospel which has come to you, as indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and growing, as it also does among you, since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God in truth just as you learned it from Epaphras, 
our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf and has made known to us your love in the Spirit. And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you be strengthened with all power, according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. This is the word of the Lord. Luke, the 10th chapter. Behold, a lawyer stood up to put Jesus to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers, who stripped him and beat him and departed leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him, bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he sent him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, You go, do likewise. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We now make our public confession to one another and to the world in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. And in hell, the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. If we have any young folks in our congregation today that like to come forward for a, for a moment or two, please do so.
Okay, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good to see you all here today. I want to ask you a question. Yeah, I'll be here for a while, right? No, not funny. Okay. Um, <laughs> how do you uh, get to know somebody that you've never met? Yeah. Yeah, you can talk to them. And how do we usually talk to people today? Yeah, I bet you don't have one yet, but you got a little phone. Or you'll get a little phone. Do you have one yet? Mom and Daddy said not yet, eh? Well, one day you will. One day you'll be big, and you'll have this phone, and on it, you'll not be able to talk to people all over the world. That's all you, one way you can get to know people. A long time ago, when the Bible was written, the way people got to know one another was usually by word of mouth or writing a letter and hand delivering it. And that's how Paul, St. Paul, got to know these Christians who lived in a town called Colossae. He had never met them, but he'd heard about them. He'd heard about their love for one another. He heard about their faith in Jesus. He'd heard about it. So today I was thinking, you know, we've never really met, have we? I mean, we've seen each other in church for, I've been here a couple of years. You guys have been here, you've been here almost two years too, haven't you? Yeah, we're going on two years. It's been a while. You guys have been here a long time too, haven't you? Yeah. But we don't really know one another, do we? Maybe this is the first time we've ever met. So I'm going to sh share with a little bit about me so you can get to know me. I like to, I like to have fun and play around you. I like to goof around and stuff. I also like to give things, too. Do you like to give things? See, you're at the age right now where you don't really need to be giving things because you're going to be getting things from older people, like your moms and dads. That's what older people are supposed to do, is to give to younger people and to take care of you. You're not supposed to take care of me. I take care of you. Right? You're not supposed to protect me. I'm supposed to protect you. And you don't have to give to me. But I will give to you. So I was thinking, what could I give to you so you could know a little bit about me? I was in Walmart the other day. I figured it's summertime. And do you guys like, I bet you probably have these already. See, I think I got enough for everybody, too. You like the blow bubbles? Do you? Who doesn't want like the blow bubbles? My goodness me. We even have little doggies. They like to play with the bubbles. Do you have doggies and kitties at home? You blow the bubbles and they go chasing after them? Not yet, eh? Well, we try that today. Eh? You got a kitty at home? Two kitties. What's their name? Happy and when? Happy and when? Windy. Willie. Okay. All right. Willie. Okay. Um. That one. Is it broken or not? Let's see. Nope, it's got a top on it, so I'm going to leave the top on. But I'm going to give you each one of these, okay? I know it's kind of silly, but it's summertime. What else you got to do in the summertime, right, except blow bubbles, right? But you see, this is one way you get to know me, because I like to blow bubbles, and I like to give. And that's how we get to know one another. And one day when you get older, you'll start giving to others. You'll start taking care of others. And that's how people will get to know you. And in the church, we call that love. And we thank Jesus for his love for us. You two guys twins? I like your shirts, though. You guys look really cool. Is there somebody on the other side of you there? Here you go. I'll tell you what, I'll pass these out, but you can remember that maybe. Sometime this summer, or when you go to school, you might meet some new people. Too. 
if you can show them who you are by being kind, right? Being kind and giving and caring. Okay? Okay? Let's pray, okay? Jesus, help us to love one another. Okay, you can go back. We'll sing our sermon hymn now, buddy. Okay, here you go. Don't go without taking one. Come here. Oh, good. I'm glad I bought two packs. There you go. Welcome. Father, in the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Today's theme is taken from Colossians chapter 1. Paul heard, Diognetus heard, and our neighbors hear. We'll ask you the same question I ask our young kids today. How do you get to know somebody you've never met before? Today, we have the internet. And what a way to get to know people, eh? Be careful with the internet. Be careful with social media. It can make a person of it can make a person passive. Passive meaning you believe everything you read. So 
it has been recommended by the church to use social media with discipline and moderation. But in the first century, Paul, the way that people got to know one another that they had never met usually was by word of mouth or by writing letters and having them hand-mailed. It's interesting to know that, you see, Paul had never met these Gentile Christians at Colossae. He never met them. But the text says, having heard your faith in Christ and the love you have unto all the saints. He had heard. And who had he heard from? Paul explains that later on in the text just as, verse 7, just as you learn from Epaphras. It's a difficult name to pronounce. I wish his parents had just called him Bob or something. You know? Thank you. It's pretty funny, don't you think? As you heard from Bob. <laughs> you see, that was he was the one that had brought the gospel to those people in that city, which was in the time it's not called Colossae anymore, it's in Turkey, the country of Turkey, Asia Minor. He had brought them the word. And then the word that had taken root in them by the power of the Holy Spirit got back to Paul. And so Paul like he does all the time, he writes back to them. And it's a very common form that he uses. He writes to them and he, he praises God for their faith in our Lord Jesus Christ and their love for all the saints. On account of the hope laid up for you in heaven. It was this hope laid up for them in heaven that inspired their deep faith, their adoration, their surrender to Christ in thanksgiving. And not why the word had gotten back to Paul. Because they had hope the hope in the resurrection of the dead and life in the world to come. For without that hope, there is no faith. Without that hope for the resurrection to eternal life, there is no church. There is no Christianity without the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it was a man who lived in the 400 A.D.s who wrote about this hope and the power of this hope. He wrote, We already see heaven with the eyes of faith, even as we prepare for it in the present with an eager spirit. And these happen by the appearing of our Lord Jesus. And Paul adds, this gospel which has come to you, what does it mean that this gospel has come to you? It means it has come, but it has not gone away. The gospel can come to many people, but then it goes away. Jesus illustrates this so beautifully in the parable of the sower. You remember the sower, the seeds, and their effect. And the word comes to some, and then it goes away but not to these, not to the truly saved, the truly born in the Spirit. The gospel comes and remains and abides. The gospel is the good news of 
Jesus Christ risen. And where does this gospel come from? Dearly beloved, it comes through the Holy Church. I can't overemphasize that. The church, the Holy Christian Church. It's her Her liturgy, her liturgy of the word that we have been hearing and singing today. It's that word of God. And the liturgy of the Holy Eucharist, which is the greatest gift that God has given to his church, is the Eucharist. It is through the Eucharist that Christ is present with us. It is through the Eucharist that he comes to us and forgives our sins, and strengthens our faith, nurtures us to live in the gospel. St. Augustine in the 4th century said this, Honor, love, and praise the Holy Church, your mother, the heavenly Jerusalem, the holy city of God. It is she who, in this Faith which you have received bears fruit and spreads throughout the world. And Paul has said that in here today. In the whole world, he said, he wrote, it is bearing fruit and growing so among yourselves. brings us a little bit further into the future, not too many years, a few decades. I introduced you to a man named Diognetus. Now I heard last week that Jack, our beloved brother Jack, has taken three years of Latin in school. I'm sure he can pronounce that word better than I can, because I believe that's Latin. This man, Diognetus, lived in Rome. It is the year 130 A.D. He was a Roman teacher, a pagan, but a tutor to the royal family, to the family of Caesar in the early 2nd century. A tutor to a young boy who you may know from your studies in school. A tutor to a very small boy named Marcus Aurelius. Who in the year 161 would become known as Caesar Marcus Aurelius. And if you've ever seen the movie Gladiator, have you seen the movie Gladiator? Just a couple. Guys don't get out much, eh? Three. Okay. Include me, four, five, (laughs) the famous British actor Richard Harris portrayed Caesar Marcus Aurelius. But what is it about this man? He had heard of this new piety. That's what they called it, this new piety. Who were these people? living this new religion, this new piety, this one that they worship they call Jesus, the Christ. Who are these people? They were totally different. They were new. And the word had gotten out. Rome, amongst the Caesars, rulers, And so, having heard this, he became intrigued. He wanted to know more about these Christians. They called themselves Christians. Who were these people? Wouldn't that be interesting if someone wants to know more about you? Who are you? 
you're in the Holy Church. So what does that mean? Are you one of these new pietists? Are you one of these Christians? You say Jesus Christ is Lord? You could be at the beach this morning, you know. It's a beautiful Sunday morning out at the, on the beach. I need of you to be here. And I'm sick. And the Christians come to worship Christ on the Sabbath morning, as they have for almost 2,000 years. And God in his providence places before Diognetus a man who only describes himself as a disciple of the apostle. Remember, it's the year 130, so it's very possible that this man actually had fellowship and a relationship with the apostles. Some have said that he was actually sitting at the feet of St. John the Apostle. Imagine that. Imagine if St. John the Apostle was coming to preach at faith next Sunday and the word got out. St. John the Apostle. Do you know how many people would be here? You would have 150 million people coming to you at least. You got the 8 million Baptists. You got the billion Catholics. I don't know, they're somewhere around there. We got the couple million Missouri St. Lutherans. They'd all be here to see the Apostle John. Verse 5 to 10. But this man, they gave him the name Mathetes, because Mathetes means disciple. But what he did is he took Diognetus under his wing and tutored him about this new piety. And he writes an epistle described by scholars as a gem of purest ray to Diognetus, laying out before him this new piety and what it was all about. These Christians that he had heard of and was so intrigued by, and who was really this Jesus Christ. In one of his passages, in one of his chapters, Mathetes writes which is truly a beautiful passage, which shows this man the Christian's heart and the Christian's life. And why? Why did they have such adoration? Why such surrender to God in thanksgiving? Why such devotion to this Jesus of Nazareth? And he writes this, By what other one was it possible that we, the wicked and ungodly, could be justified than by the only Son of God? O oh, sweet exchange! O oh, unsearchable operation! O oh, benefits surpassing all expectations! that the wickedness of many should be hid in a single righteous one, and that the righteousness of one should justify many transgressors. It brings us to the 21st century now. Quite a leap, eh? I heard in the news the other day that now there are many that are talking about this as a culture of hate. What do you think about that, church? A holy Christian church living in a culture of hate? Paul and Mathetes proves to us, it really proves to us how impactful our faith in Christ and our love for one another is to those who are presently, hopefully not permanently, but presently outside of the Holy Church. 
And it is important to remember, dearly beloved, that there is no disconnect between our faith and our love and our life in Christ and presence, our presence in the Holy Church of Christ. And I hope our neighbors, are they listening? I don't know. What are our neighbors doing? I know it would be hard for you, beloved, to take a Sunday morning and delay coming to church to see what are your neighbors doing. Don't do that. Don't be kind of weird. But if they're listening and watching, maybe just one, as is, according to this text, the whole world is watching and listening. Because that's why the gospel is bearing fruit and increasing because they hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the resurrection of Christ from the dead and gives the forgiveness of sins and eternal life to all who believe him. And that faith comes from his holy church, your mother, who gave you new birth and baptism, who nurtured you with the word, who gives you the milk of the Holy Eucharist, forgives your sins and increases hope with eager spirit in the life that is yet to come. Therefore, beloved, let the grace of this faith, the love of Jesus, be present and visible so that maybe one day our neighbors may say, we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love that you have for all the saints. Amen. Almighty God, we give thanks for all your goodness and bless you for the love that sustains us from day to day. We praise you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, for your Holy Church, for the means of grace, for the lives of all faithful and just people, and for the hope of the life to come. Help us to treasure in our hearts all that you have done for us and enable us to show our thankfulness in lives that are wholly given to your service. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Save and defend your whole church, purchased with the precious blood of Christ. Strengthen your faithful people through the word and holy sacraments, making them perfect in love and in all good works and establishing in them the faith once delivered to the saints. Lord, in your mercy. Send the light of your truth into all the earth. Raise up faithful servants of Christ to advance the gospel, both at home and in distant lands. Lord, in your mercy. Preserve our nation in justice and honor, that we may lead a peaceable life with integrity. Grant health and favor to all who bear office in our land, especially the President and Congress of the United States, the Governor and Legislature of this state, and to all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Help them to serve this people according to your holy will. Lord, in your mercy, take from us all hatred and prejudice. Give us the spirit of love and order our days in your peace. Prosper the labor of those who work to bring peace and justice to the nations of the world. 
that mutual understanding and common endeavor may be increased among all people. Lord, in your mercy. Sanctify our homes with your presence and bless them with joy. Keep our children in the covenant of their baptism and enable their parents to bring them up in lives of faith and devotion. Unite the members of all families in a spirit of affection and service that they may show your praise in our land and in all the world. Lord, in your mercy. By your word and Holy Spirit, comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity, especially Ken, Amy, Wenda, Kim, Judy, Shirley, Lisa, Steve, Ray, Ina, Jackie, Janet, Martha, and Jerry. Be with those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those to whom death draws near. Bring consolation to those in sorrow and grant to all a measure of your love, taking them into your tender bosom. Lord, in your mercy, we remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you in your church on earth, who now rest from their labor. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints, and bring us at last to the joys of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever.
The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud, we magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. And now the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we beg you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face to shine upon you and be very gracious unto you. The Lord, look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing together now. Lord, dismiss us with your blessing.